So, I'm on my way out to Moorhead City, North Carolina, out by the coast. And, you know, I was sitting here and I'm thinking about our people as a whole. I'm always thinking about our people, you know. And to me, I feel like if you're not giving any thought to the uh, status of your people, whether that be physical or mental, then, you know, you're not really about this life. I mean, it's not like, you know what I'm saying? Like, when you really have that compassion, when you really care about your people, you're thinking about your people. You're thinking about different ways to reach them. You're thinking about, you know, how to uh, get them to be motivated. You're thinking about all types of different things as far as people are concerned. And I was sitting here thinking about uh, when black people say, you know, God made me. Now, don't be scared, Christians. I'm not going to spend time sitting here banging on your fake-ass religion. Not this time. I just want to deal with the statement itself. That God made me. This statement should come with a comma at the end of the would-be statement. There should be a comma. God made me, but the white man and his mama created me. And I'm saying this based on the idea that we are a vessel. People, Most people will agree that we are a vessel, but what makes us is our would-be spirit, is our would-be uh, minds. That's what makes us. People say it all the time. This body is just a vessel. So people give credit to God creating the vessel, but we seem to ignore the programming of the white man and his mama and the effect that it has had on our psychological makeups. Now, some would maybe argue that, man, my mom and daddy, you know, my mom and them raised me. They, they the reason I got a lot of the uh, ideas and things of that nature that I have. And I would argue that the white man and his mama didn't made you by proxy. Because the white man and his mama gave your mom and daddy their ideology. This is just basic. Where we get our mindsets from. Where we get our religion from. Our cultures and traditions. The things that we do. Are those set in place by the white man and his mama. Now I'm not talking about y'all black people's, you know, uh braggadocious attitudes about dancing, athletics, cooking. We're not talking about those things. Talent is not what we're dealing with here. Because if you ask me, you can be as talented as you want to be. You can be able to, you know, shoot a basketball from half court every time. 100% from the three. But still be psychologically poisoned by the white man and his mom. Based on the traditions that's been passed down to you. Via the white man and his mama. Via being in this nation that we learned or uh, came to call America. Three K's. Don't get that shit fucked up. Incorporated. Sometimes I leave off the incorporated. I think that's a very important part of who we are as a people as far as the way our mentality is made up. Because this is really Earth Incorporated. And then it's America Incorporated as a shell company of the overall Earth. And when I say that, I'm talking about the people in power, the people who control uh, the entire Earth, everything you must know. Uh, regardless of whether you want to call yourself a conspiracy theorist or whatever you want to call yourself, you must know that everything is comes back to the making of money. That's just how it is. You have to understand that. So even your desire to attain such is a program. I talk about social engineering here on uh, my channel often. And many people may not think about social engineering because most people believe that they are some form of individual. We all have this idea of uniqueness about us. So we don't look at us as a social body. 
we don't view ourselves that way but the reason that you can go uh, talk to people and y'all have the same types of ideas and traditions this is black people the same types of ideas and traditions the reason that you have those and you share them with somebody else in this country is because y'all was raised on the same America they give you your entertainment your schooling which is a huge one because when you look at social engineering you have to factor in schools these are the hubs of where you receive some of the deepest indoctrination that you're going to receive outside of the indoctrination that you receive from your parents I would say school would be the second strongest level or form of indoctrination parents being the first because really school could be uh, uh, overrode if our parents were up to the task our parents aren't up to the task of overriding the social engineering and programming that we receive in school they're just not prepared to do so that's just how it is now I said I wasn't gonna rag in on y'all's religion and I won't but I will mention that religion is another form of social engineering big groups of these and these aren't individual things it doesn't matter how unique you think you are these aren't individual things the shows you watch the music you listen to these aren't matters of individualism somebody else listening to that somebody watching that show somebody reading that book somebody uh, reading that magazine you know this is a, a social thing a social construct our innate embedded inferiority complex and yearning and seeking for white validation is a social construct you were not born giving a flying fuck about what white folk think of you that's not how you came out it may feel that way a lot of a little way that a lot of these motherfuckers out here coon it may seem that they came out of the wound as coons but that's not how it happened they were socially engineered to be coons one of the things about a conquering or ruling or dominant class is that its mission is to push on the uh, uh, the class that they enslave one of his missions is to push on the ideology that I validate you I let you know whether you're in a good job or a bad job I reward you for such I can either give you positive reinforcement or negative reinforcement these are psychological terms if you study psychology many of us do many of us think we do even if we don't we like to believe we all got a little psychologist inside of us but if you actually study psychology in any way you will learn about positive and negative reinforcement So what do I mean? For example, an example of positive reinforcement would be, and in, in, I guess I'll say in this social dynamic where uh, white folk are the ones handing out the rewards. So a lot of times black people, we have ourselves confused. We believe that we are in control of our own destinies and all this shit. You can't be in control of anything if you're seeking white approval. You're not in control. Your whole mentality is driving you to seek acceptance and approval and love from white folk. It's your inferiority complex. You weren't born with it. It was taught to you. We just have a hard time shaking and unlearning this part of it about ourselves. But for example, a positive reinforcement would be, uh, y'all hear black people all the time say, man, that motherfucker got paid to coon. That would be an example of positive reinforcement where you receive money for selling your people out in whatever way you do it. This could be in the form of misrepresentation, shows like uh, 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 Love and Hip Hop, for example, where you receive money to show yourself in a negative light, show your people in a negative light. Or it could be the business suit, three-piece suit, you know, talking that 
those white talking points and receiving payment from the dominant society and a good job. I wish they was all like you. If they was all like you, Jamal, <laughs> then black people would be in a much better place. You see. Positive reinforcements. I've seen some people refer to them as butter biscuits, even. <laughs> Y'all wild as hell, right? And then you have negative reinforcement and the idea and the the uh, the setup or makeup of negative reinforcement is that I will take away a negative condition for you. For example, let's say you raised and you grew up in the would be ghetto. Right? Grew up in the ghetto. White man comes along and says, you know what? Or his mama, either one of them. Or both. Hell, sometimes they come in teams. He says, well, if you will simply sell your people out, I will take you away from this ghetto, even though I don't want to put you here. I will take away this pain. I will take away this struggle. I will take away this situation. And put you up in the suburbs next to some good white folk. And see, the trick about the white society is they put you in these situations and then they act like they're blessing you for taking you out. And then they want you to typically sell out your people in one way or another. Cause harm to your people. This is negative reinforcement. I'll take you up out of that ghetto if you'll do this. This is the programming that we receive as black people here and then you have the media propaganda again God might have created you he might have made you but the white man created your mindset he created the would be spirit and soul you got because he's bombarding you with propaganda at all times telling you how much of a piece of shit you are at all times This is constant. Many of us fall for this. Many black people suffer from low self-esteem by being in this environment. We take on the ideology that money is going to make it all be all right. It does not matter how much money you have in a system of white supremacy. It doesn't matter how uh, educated you are in a system of white supremacy. These things are completely uh, uh, irrelevant. Do you believe if they start rounding niggas up? If they just start rounding niggas up and just throwing them in, in, the, in the cage, which they already do a version of that, it's a privatized prison complex. Another social construct inflicted upon us by the white man and his mama. Many will say, well, y'all shouldn't break laws. Guess who wrote them? White man, his mama. That's just how it is. And until we deal with the situation that we're in, we're going to continue to be in this situation because we're not breaking any of these patterns. But if they start rounding black people up, throwing them in cages, do you believe that somebody going to come ask you to show your uh, degrees? Do you believe that's going to save you? Because we know you hang your head high on these degrees. I know you do that. I get why you would do that. Because that's a status symbol. In this society. Oh, you went to some school. And you collected up you some debt. And you got bragging rights about that now. But money education ain't going to save you. If they decide to uh, annihilate you, money education ain't going to save you. You see. Many of us think it will. But it will not. I guarantee you that. Because that's not how it works. 
you have to understand who made your mindset. And it's like we don't really want to deal with that. We want to believe that we on some, you know, like we just come out being self-haters or, you know, that this is by accident. This isn't by accident. This is the state they want us to be in. They want y'all to continue to believe that voting is how you get liberation. Even though we've seen historically that that is not how you get liberation. The right to vote wasn't even, uh, didn't even come about by voting. We got to understand this shit because they run the Jedi mind trick on us. They running that shit and it's working. It's working because people such as myself and many others are having to even have these conversations. People were having these conversations before I was born and still here we are. So-called 2019 still having these conversations because we don't understand the program. I think it was, uh, matter of fact, I know for a fact, it was Neely Fuller that said, if you don't understand the system of white supremacy, everything else is going to confuse you. You're going to believe that you're an individual. You're going to believe that you're having thoughts and ideas on your own. As all these thoughts and ideas have you checking for white folk. Have you wanting them to pat you on the head. Thinking that you unique. When all of the things that you do, even for a hobby, the things that you do that you think is fun, there's a good chance, based on how we were raised, that it's anti-black. Black people are programmed to be anti-self you don't believe in yourself you want you don't want to do anything for yourself as it pertains to black people not this individualistic shit well I got this and I got that and I got this we're not talking about the individuality we're talking about as is it, it, it uh, as it pertains to a team mentality Do you see how ingenious the program is? Because of course they want you to think that it's just about you. When we think about ourselves this way, it makes us weak. Our refusal to band together, to fight, stand up, do anything, is a weakness that we have. I would deem it a weakness. Many black scholars would deem it a weakness. But to the white man, y'all are perfect. Your ideas and the mindset you have is perfect. He loves that shit. Because you don't see the programming you receive. You think you some type of individual. You think you some type of different. Like there hadn't been black folk that had the same mentality the whole time. Now I know people, you know, they, they, it is a hard pill to swallow. When you think about your life, when you look at how you was raised, you know, trying to grasp everything is a tough pill to swallow. But I would argue until we deal with where we are, it's not going to change. You got to see this shit. Everything we do is in favor of white supremacy. Everything. Even the talents that y'all say we have, 
why folk exploit those talents? You being the entertainment exploitation. The athletic gift that y'all say, uh, well, I ain't gonna say y'all say. This is very clear. The athletic gift we have. The gift we have for music is still exploited by them. They like that shit. The only thing that black people do that white folk don't like is rebel against this system. That's the everything else we do. Y'all can think that you causing the white man some mental anguish and stress. You're not. That's them grand nigga thoughts we like to have. Everything we do, they like that shit. Everything. Because it works in their favor. Or they can exploit it. Use it. On their own. Or for their own. I know. I know I'm preaching to the goddamn choir. I get that. But I, I want us to think more about ourselves from a sociological standpoint. We gotta start looking at the mentalities that we have. Cause man, I'm talking about every day I'm seeing somebody doing an awesome coon shit. Every single day I'm seeing this shit. But I just start trying to figure out, okay, well this mentality, it came from somewhere, this is a program. Ain't nobody born no damn coon. That's impossible to me. If you study psychology and child development, it's impossible that a person is born a coon. You're being raised ignorantly. That's what's happening. Your mentality, your would-be spirit, the white man hasn't programmed the fuck out of it. And everything you do is for them. I'm talking about from going to school, working, entertainment, everything y'all do. They like that shit. Ain't but one thing, y'all. There isn't but one thing that the black man, woman, and child have not been socially engineered to do that the white man don't like. That's unifying and rebelling on this bitch ass. Understanding. Recognizing the situation that we're in and seeking to change that situation. That's the only thing. You good doing everything else you're doing. You can get drunk, party, you know, sell your drugs, go to prison, run your ass down to the uh, child support court, and down to the welfare uh, office, and keep fighting. Black man and woman. Everything y'all do. Go get your degree. Go try to be a doctor. Go to school for that shit. Everything you do. They like that shit. Now they are a little uncomfortable with y'all talking about these reparations right now. <laughs> They're a little uncomfortable with that conversation. They're like, God damn it, we keep telling these niggas every 10 years they're not getting this shit and they keep coming back. You know. It makes them uncomfortable, but they're not worried about shit. Because they know what happens when we don't get the shit we asking for. Nothing. We don't unplug. We don't unify. We don't, we don't do anything. But continue working and operating under the same frequency. I know I ran my goddamn mouth for a minute, y'all, but that was, that was on my heart. That was really on my heart. And I appreciate anybody that has the attention span that's listening to me talk. And I'm sure if you listen to me, I'm just preaching to the choir. You know this shit already. And if you don't know it, then you're at least able to take in the message or hear what I'm saying to you. 
Because this ain't coming from no bullshit. I mean, you can look through our history. It don't matter how much we like to say, you know, God and all this shit like that made me. But your mind, though, ain't yours. The white man engineered, socially engineered your mind to be what it is. Your behaviors to be what they are. For you to seek their approval. They, they put all that in you. The fact that y'all get tired of people talking about black stuff. Like. <laughs> this is all programmed. But. That's all the fuck I'm going to say on this one. Y'all comment. If you feel need to comment. Like. Share. Subscribe. Hit that notification button. Links in the description box to follow me on social media. Order a t-shirt. Donate. Whatever you want to do, it's all in there, y'all. We have got to start looking at this shit from a sociological standpoint. Look at the things that we do that support white supremacy. Without us, the shit dies, y'all. We are the life of it. It's not the motherfuckers that's inflicting it on us, y'all. It's not them. It's the people who allow for that thing, whatever it is. And this is all forms of oppression. It's the people that allow themselves to be oppressed. That's where the power is. And we gotta take that shit back, take our minds back and recognize the situation that we in so we can change this shit. That's all the fuck I wanna say. Mad love, shout out to Rob, y'all already know what it is. I'm out.